Happy Veterans Day there, veteran. All right, well, 11-10, 11-10-23, 14-47 hours, off to the woods. So I'm thinking while I was getting ready, you know, when I take my stuff out of the tote. I thought you smelled like fried bologna. Yeah. Take my stuff out of the tote, hang it outside on the porch, in the fresh air. In the fresh, fresh air of the outdoor wilderness to permeate the clothing. And then I got winded yesterday. Now, comment below, my friends. The deer wind you when they smell you? Or is that something that they do if they see you? Or is that something to do if they just don't like the way the things feel? When you say winding, you mean blowing? Shh. Oh, yeah, blowing. Uh, yeah, yeah, what is it called? When they see you. What is it called? Is it called winding you? No, winding is, it is called when they catch blowing? your scent. Blowing is when they exhale forcefully. So, yes, when they catch movement, they will blow. I try to use the word winding. Winding means catching your scent. Yeah, but when you say blow, you know can mean so many different things, so don't many be this, negative don't be dirty. connotations. Stop being dirty. Uh, you know, I don't necessarily know you if know, I would too appreciate getting blown by a deer. Well, no, you never do. That's the thing. <laughs> Nobody does. Anyways, so that's kind of what my thoughts Would you rather were. call it toot? And it toots at you? <laughs> toots at you. Sneeze. Snort. Sneezes at you. Is it more of a snort? Snort you? But then they have what's called a snort wheeze, which is different than the deer snorted a blow. The deer, would you rather say the door blew you or the door, or the door the deer snorted you? Mm -hmm. It's all kind of crazy. All kind of crazy. But those are my thoughts. You could take those thoughts there, followers, and ruminate upon them and make some comments below. Let us know what you think. I understand that scent is an issue. I do. But you look at some of the old timers, man, and they just, uh, blue jeans, black and red plaid shirt, camouflage hat maybe. You know, and I think playing the wind has a lot to do with it. But yesterday, the, I don't think it was a wind issue, but when I cut through the, the, the new growth to get back to my stand, I'm like, well, if I'm going to pee anywhere, I'm going to pee way back there, not by my stand. And, uh, I don't know, maybe it caught the scent of that. Who knows? Pee on yourself, did you? Get a little on your boots? Uh, you know, pee, you know there, there is so much that goes into to scent free. So, ideally, you know, you can't take your clothes out of whatever you're keeping it in. If it's, if it's one of them scent lockers or even if you take it out of a, a, a I've seen guys that have built cedar closets in their basement with a ventilation system and a filter system to hang their hunting gear in well that's all well and good but if you're gonna have to take it you have to go into there with a, a scent free tote that has ventilation or some sort of scent killer stuff on it and then you're gonna have to carry it like outside and get dressed outside because if you get dressed inside well guess what now everything that's inside is on your clothes so i understand how intense scent free can actually be but it's another added expense for us knuckle draggers i can't afford a cedar closet i can't afford a scent free tote so i get a tupperware tote that i keep my hunt clothes in and i get to the i get to the cabin i get to camp wherever it may be i take my clothes off i put them in the totes and then when i get ready to go hunting i take them out of the totes some of them i'll hang outside while i'm getting ready and i'll put some of my clothes on in the house and then 
go outside, grab the rest of the clothes, throw them in the truck. Now, how scent free is the truck? Because the truck could have, who knows, foo foo, centers. So what, now you gotta buy a system, a yeah, Ozonic yeah. system for you your car? You have no idea what's on that seat you're sitting on. I know, could be anything. Could be anything on there. Oh, so many things to think about. That's what we like to do on our show is talk about all the stuff that revolves around the outdoors and um, let's have discussion. Let's let's talk about it from, you know, from the blue collar guy, from the working man's point of view, you know. Some guys don't even, just, you know, and, and maybe that you got to have 12 stands out there while well, at least four because the wind could come from four different directions that could affect your hunt, but it could also come from eight different directions or 16 different directions. A lot of different directions that the wind could come from and, and to try to plan for that and set up different stands in different locations. And, and, and what stand are you gonna hunt? You gonna hunt the stand where the deer have been showing up or are you gonna hunt the stand that's gonna play the wind and then not see nothing? But that's not necessarily the good energy out there. Food for thought. Go out into your tree stand, think about these things, then come back, watch our show, and tell us what you think. Right? There you go. Okay, there you go, you got it. So simple, such a simple thing. I saw a herring. No, chipmunk. <laughs> I saw a chipmunk. You know what I saw? Two chipmunks. A shrubbery. Many shrubberies. 
many shrubberies, but, but at the very first, it was a shrubbery. And then there were other shrubberies that came after that shrubbery. You who'd like that? Roger. <laughs> Roger the shrubber. Roger the shrubber. Okay, well, that's good. That's good. Oh. Let's continue down the freeway. I don't know. I think there's a passing lane up here. <laughs> yeah, the truck lane. They did not see the Jeep. <laughs>